We're gonna get started here. Uh, give give people about one more minute or two to log in in case anybody's running late before we get started. I see a couple more people still uh, jumping in to the webinar. We'll give everybody a couple minutes before we get started. Where's everyone from? Is everyone from uh, Atlanta? Anybody outside of Atlanta? See Daniel, Atlanta. Texas. New Mexico, wow. You got everybody from all over. Awesome. Ways on uh, Eastern time zone, it looks like. No Texas is central. I stand corrected. We still got people jumping in, so I'm not. Give it a couple more minutes. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So thank you for joining us today uh, for our CompTIA Pentest Plus info session. Uh, my name is Sean Mitchell. I'm an instructor here at ATG Learning. And I'll tell you a little bit about myself uh, before becoming an instructor here with ATG Learning. I worked in the field for about 15 years. Um, uh, starting my, you know, my way up, just like everyone probably in this uh, seminar webinar is trying to do, getting my foot in the door. Uh, started at IBM, worked in laptop server support, uh, moved my way up uh, in that uh, particular industry. Moved to different companies, uh, ending at an MSP managed service provider, uh, where I was a uh, service delivery manager. And basically, uh, as a MSP, basically what we do is we go into different companies and we basically look at their infrastructure IT needs uh, see you know what areas that we can security or we, we can improve their infrastructure if we're gonna change you know their uh, current physical environment to a virtualization environment uh, and you know whatever needs they need to kind of streamline their IT services we kind of are, are all in one shop you basically acquire us to be your IT services and you know, you get several resources to basically take care of your IT needs. Uh, so with that being said, <laughs> I've had a great opportunity in my career to uh, have experience and exposure to several different industries, not just uh, staying at one company for 15 years. I've supported several hundred clients uh, working for an MSP, anywhere from, uh, you know, logistics to manufacturing, um, you know, to, you uh, you know, several several different types of you know needs that different clients have. I've had the experience of implementing different uh, IT needs into their uh, environment. So that's a little bit about myself. Uh, you know, I have several certifications: uh, CompTIA certifications, EC Council certifications. Uh, so I'm certified, and I also uh, have 
rural knowledge of implementing several things that uh, you will learn uh, within uh, CompTIA Pen Test Plus. Let's move on. So on my uh, current slide I have right here, it's a CompTIA certification pathways. Uh, what we have here is, you know, if you're looking to get into the field, uh, there's several different certifications that CompTIA has come up with that's going to help you progress into, you know, that dream job that you're looking for in IT. Uh, if you're just getting your foot in the door, uh, we can look at this IT Fundamentals Plus certification. Hey, I don't know anything about computers. Uh, I need to, you know, learn about a PC and all the components inside of a PC. <clears throat> and, you know, start from the ground up. Teach me as though I know nothing. IT Fundamentals Plus. Uh, you know, beginner certification. A plus, net plus, these are beginner certifications as well. Uh, these are going to teach you, you know, customer service skills, you know, how to talk with somebody on the phone, how to troubleshoot your troubleshooting skills. Uh, a plus teaches you a lot about components that are inside of the computer uh, from memory and CPU and hard drive and different types of hard drive, solid states, drives. Uh, so you're going to learn all that entry level stuff in this course, Network Plus. Obviously, you're going to be more uh, focused on networking skills. So Net Plus is a, is a good certification along with A plus. These two certifications combined will lead you into Security Plus, uh, which is basically the segue into what we're talking about today, Pen Test Plus. Uh, Security Plus is going to teach you uh, basically blue team techniques. And if you don't know what a blue team is, a blue team is basically uh, the team that's going to be on the receiving end of a pen test. So the blue team is going to be the people defending against the penetration te testers, which are the red team, right? They're offense. They're going to be the ones using these different tools that we're going to be talking about uh, in this webinar briefly and some that you will learn in uh, the course hands-on doing labs. Uh, Security Plus, again, the blue team, pen test, you are the red team. You're the one trying to infiltrate somebody's network, but you're doing it in an ethical manner. You're not going to be doing it in any malicious intent to take down the network. Uh, so when you start getting over here to Security Plus and to the pen test plus certifications, now we're looking at intermediary certifications, right? We're talking about, hey, I know about computers. I know about networking techniques. I know about security. I want to be that person that's going to be penetrating uh, somebody's environment, testing for weaknesses they have in their environment. They're assessing their risk and telling them about where their risk uh, lie uh, so that we can start implementing different types of security controls to mitigate against these risks. That's what the job of a pen tester is. You're that person that may be on an audit team, a third, third party audit going into somebody's environment and attacking their environment with different tools. Uh, you know, and there's different segues from pen test. We got cybersecurity analyst, which again, that's going to be more of a blue team offensive. And then we got advanced security practitioner, which is an expert level certification uh, that, you know, you can move to next as well. Uh, so, what is the difference between pen test and EC Council's certified ethical hacking certification? Well, these two tests, uh, you know, go hand in hand, they compete with each other. And one thing we got to know about CompTIA is that CompTIA is a nonprofit organization, meaning, as you can see, their cost of $359, uh, they're able to uh, price their exams at, at, at a very reasonable cost because they're a nonprofit organization. Uh, while we have certified ethical hacking, while they are a profit organization that are looking to make money off of these vouchers that they, uh, you know, have with the, with their exams, $1,199, right? And that's for a non-member. Uh, again, CompTIA pen test. We had 80 questions, 165 minutes. We got to get a score of a 750 out of 800 to pass, right? It's score-based. So you're going to know if you failed, you're going to know how many points you failed by. If you pass, you got to get above 750 or above. 165 minutes, uh, multiple choice, sim questions. So we got click and drag. Uh, it's more of a hands-on uh, exam, 
right? So you're going to have to not only learn, memorize terminology, theory uh, while taking the exam, but you always have to prove uh, to CompTIA that you have hands-on knowledge and you can go into, you know, a log file uh, that you may get from a vulnerability assessment. You can determine exactly what they're scanning from that assessment and you can determine exactly what vulnerabilities may lie based on, you know, some log uh, script that you may uh, be presented with on the CompTIA pen test. Talk about SIMS, you know, we're talking about click and drag SIMS, you know, click and drag, you know, the script or, you know, the CLI command line interface that would allow you to uh, export the information that we need to be able to determine, you know, what ports are open on this particular network. So there's a lot of, you know, not a lot, I'd say maybe four or five SIMS that you'll have out of the 80 questions uh, that you're expected to, uh, you know, perform. It's a performance exam. Certified ethical hacking, four hours, 125 multiple choice. It's only pass or fail. You know if you pass, because you get a pass. If you fail, you fail. You're not going to know how much you failed by, right? You're not going to know how much you passed by. It's more theory-based, and you must attend training before you can actually even take the certified ethical hacking. So you have to come to a boot camp before you can actually test for a CEH certification. Uh, they recommend at least two years of experience, and you're not going to have uh, uh, the hands-on knowledge uh, and skill set that you would have with the CompTIA pen test. There's actually a second test, uh, certified ethical hacking practical exam that you would take after the CEH to actually get that hands-on uh, uh, certification that comes with the CEH. Well, CompTIA kind of bundles it into one package. You take that exam, you're also going to get, uh, you know, you actually sign a waiver stating that, you know, I'm not going to use uh, these techniques in any malicious way. Right, it's the ethical waiver that you actually sign when you do take the cop to your pen test. So, pen test is in that pen test plus is in the name for that certification. And you can go on indeed.com, you can type in pen test, and there are several jobs that are just that a penetration tester, right? So, you can see in CompTIA that they, you know kind of classify their certification in a way that is going to be something that you can use in the real world. Uh, a lot of different job roles uh, and, you know, opportunities are available for penetration testers. And again, I mentioned auditor. If you want to, you know, work for like KPMG, you know, it's an auditing company and you want to be uh, the people to come in to audit the IT infrastructure of somebody's organization, making sure that they have the security policies and compliances in place. Uh, to mitigate against, you know, security risk in the environment. That's a certification for you. CEH, you know, same type of job roles and opportunities are available, but, you know, it comes with a premium cost to taking that uh, particular exam. Some of the course objectives that you will see uh, from CompTIA's Pen Test Plus, and you can actually go on uh, CompTIA's website, you can type in CompTIA pen test objectives, and you get a list of objectives. And I kind of named out some of these objectives for those of you that have no clue in what you are going to learn or what you may need to be aware of when you uh, come in to take this boot camp. Planning and scoping is, you know, domain one, I would say, of the CompTIA pen test. And BI, business impact analysis, right? This basically is stating, you know, a document stating that, hey, what infrastructure in our environment do we need to protect against in case a disaster were to strike or organization was to be impacted by something, right? Netflix, they might have a business model stating that, hey, our business impact analysis states that the most impactful thing to our organization would be a web server or our internet going down. Well, now we cannot service several million clients to be able to stream services to their homes, right? So they're going to have in their business impact analysis, uh, you know, assessment stating that, hey, we need to have some type of redundancy in case something was to impact one of our data centers. That goes into the planning and scoping. Contracts, you know, I'm moving to a cloud environment. What's their SLA? Service level agreement. 
how long is it going to take for them to respond to a disaster if I have something happen in my organization? Hey, email's down. I have to call Microsoft because Office 365 is down. Well, what is their service level agreement? How fast are they going to respond to my request? All right, statement of work, uh, SOWs, right? Contracts, what type of work are they going to perform uh, based on this documentation, based on a project that they are going to implement into my organization? And non-disclosure agreements, right? These are different contracts that we sign during our planning and scoping, right? Information I can't disclose or share with other organizations. We have assessments that we can use the red team and blue team, which I discussed earlier. Red team being the offensive team, they're attacking. A pen tester is attacking. And a blue team are those people that are going to be on the receiving end trying to protect the environment from these attackers. <clears throat> going to pen testing, we got different types of pen testing we're going to be talking about in boot camp, black box, white box, gray box, pen testing. These basically are different levels of how much information uh, you have when it comes to performing a pen test. If you're an external uh, entity and you don't have any knowledge of the environment that you're penetrating, right? Then that would be what's called black box pen testing. Now, if you know everything about the environment, you have all the information that you need to know, IP addresses, servers, <clears throat> you know, networking scheme, then that's called a white box test. Typically this is an internal uh, pen penetration tester or auditor that works for the company uh, and they would be white box testing that environment. If I gave you some information, then we got gray box testing. Threat models are going to be useful for uh, planning and scoping so that we can kind of diagram or get a physio diagram of, you know, where does that data flow uh, within the organization? Uh, where are our security points, weak points, you know, where we have to authenticate into a different uh, server? Uh, we can kind of model that out and we can put in safeguards into those weak points looking at our models. <laughs> Insider threats, advanced persistent threats, these are things that we want to mitigate against with our threat model, right? Advanced persistent threat, we got people trying to attack our environment uh, Monday through five, Friday, eight to five, sponsored by, you know, nation state like China. Insider threat, these are the people that uh, we really need to be careful with because these are the people that work for our organization and they might get upset about something uh, you know, that we did to them. Maybe we promote them or maybe we let them go. Now they're disgruntled. They have all the information that they need uh, to cause and wreck habit in our environment. So we got to watch out for those insider threats. So these are the uh, most detrimental to our organization. And then, you know, what security tools are we going to use during this planning and scoping? Trying to find out and model things that we need to uh, mitigate against. Domain two, we're going to get into stuff talking about information gathering tools that we need to use to gather information. Uh, that part of the pen testing is uh, where you're going to get into using, uh, you know, our lab environment that we have that will provide you here, CompTIA uh, lab environment where you can get in and uh, mess with several tools, uh, Nmap, uh, Metasploit, penetration tools, Kali Linux, uh, and several of these tools that are, some of them are command line interface. Some of them are GUI based interfaces, but you're going to get your hands on uh, exposure to how these tools actually work and how you can collect information and how you can disseminate when information is being presented back to you from these tools. Fingerprinting, right? This is basically laying out, you know, an organization's network and structure. I go, I'm getting hired into a new company. I have no idea what servers, laptops, access points, uh, routers, switches, or in that organization. So I use these scanning tools to kind of scan and fingerprint and get me a, a visual diagram layout of, you know, how are all these devices interconnected with each other? You know, social engineering is another way we can perform information gathering. I pretend to be somebody I'm not to uh, impersonate and gain trust of an individual to try and, you know, sniff out information about that organization. Well, who's the CEO? Who's in charge? Who is your network engineer? What do they do? You know, packet sniffing, we're going to be talking about that as well. Tools like Wireshark that you get hands-on exposure 
uh, going in, looking at you know, packets uh, that can be sent over the network. Um, and you know, if we don't have encryption, when we talk about cryptography, uh, tools like you know, uh, AES is going to take data, plain text data, and encrypt it into ciphertext data. So that if we use a tool, packet analyzer, or packet sniffer like Wireshark, at least it won't be in plain text and people can read our username and passwords. It's going to be encrypted, right? And using these tools, we want to make sure that we don't get too many false positives and false negatives. I don't want to scan my system and my system comes back saying that, hey, you have a virus or you have software that's not up to date, right? Those are false positives. I don't have a virus and my system is up to date, right? or false negatives, it's the opposite, right? Hey, I scanned the system, everything looks fine. But lo and behold, everything's not fine. So we've got to calibrate our information gathering to make sure that we don't get too many of these. Now, moving on to domain three, attacks and exploits. We talk about several different types of attacks, right? Attacks and exploits of viruses. What are you trying to mitigate against as a pen tester? Some of these attacks and exploits you're actually going to be able to use uh, in a lab environment to perform some attacks. Because as a pen tester, you're on the red team, you're offensive and you're attacking. Uh, spear phishing, you're trying to gather information about, you know, somebody via email. You see that happening a lot now with people working from home. Evil twin attacks, talking about, you know, routers that are uh, placed in somebody's environment, access points that are named exactly the same SSID as other access points. Uh, and we're trying to get other people to join to our evil twin access point to steal information, right? It's an attack and it's an exploit. What are the motivations of these attacks? You know, <laughs> what, uh, what uh, allows these attacks to uh, be successful, right? If I get an email, fear phishing, for example, an email is spoof, spoof meaning it's coming from an individual that I think is somebody of authority, like a CEO of my organization, and they're saying, hey, I need you to reset somebody's email password ASAP, a sense of urgency. Well, that's a type of social engineering that allows uh, that particular attack to be effective, right? So when we talk about authority and, and urgency, these are ways that we can uh, increase uh, the ability for these attacks to be successful. Uh, exploiting networks and VLAN hopping, right? We talk about network vulnerabilities as well. We talk about attacks. VLANs, what are VLANs first off? These are ways we can segment the network. VLAN hopping is jumping from VLAN 1 to VLAN 2, a VLAN you're not a member of to gain access to something that you're not supposed to gain access to, right? Cross-site scripting attacks, cross-site request forgery attacks, Kerberal, Kerberal acing, right? Different types of attacks we're going to talk about in, in the essence of time. Uh, I'm not going to go into explaining these, but these are other attacks that you're going to learn about uh, in pen testing. Web-based attacks and authentication-based attacks with Kerberos. Uh, domain four, testing tools. <clears throat> you're going to get exposure using these tools, right? Some tools like full-fledged uh, open, uh, open boss, green bone security. These are vulnerability assessment tools that you'll be able to scan a network uh, and see where the vulnerabilities lie. And then you'll get like, access to these penetration tools like Kane enabled John the Ripper, Hydra, and Aircraft, right? That are going to try and steal credentials and passwords. And they all have different abilities, right? Different GUI based, command line interface, uh, stealing authentication, stealing wireless uh, passwords with Aircraft, right? Nmap, you're going to get exposure to the CLI, command line interface, of typing in different commands, right? And you're going to be tested on that as well. So Nmap-A, Linux-based, uh, cap sensitive. Hey, I want to scan this IP address and I want to include the operating system, the OS that's running on it. Nmap-P, I want to scan port 22 SSH of this particular IP address. And it gets a little bit more intensive uh, depending on information you want to gather. If you want to scan, you know, a CIDR notation, a whole group of machines, or just one machine at a time, what things do you want to list from your scan? Uh, you can do that with, with Nmap, which isn't a full-fledged vulnerability assessment uh, 
example, but it's going to give you some information uh, about, about the environment. Right. And reporting, domain five, reporting, you know, based on these penetration tests, based on these vulnerability assessment tests, you get a report back, right? We're talking about jobs like an auditor. And this report is going to, uh, you know, give us a score or a risk rating, right? Based on this report and its risk rating, we want to keep it secure because we don't want this report getting in the wrong hands so other people can see where our vulnerabilities lie in organization. But we want to take this report and we want to, you know, do a lessons learned, hey, where can we improve in our organization? Uh, and then we want to follow up to make sure uh, whatever safeguards we put in place allow us to improve our, uh, you know, assess assessment based on a report. We want to normalize the report. We don't want to have duplicate data in that report. So we want to use de deduplication to make sure that we don't, we're not getting duplicate data. And we want to use these mitigation strategies and train our people, improve our processes, improve our technology where we see fit. Physical security controls, technical security controls, administrative technology administrative controls, uh, whatever we need to implement in our environment to make sure that, uh, you know, we can uh, have a safer uh, workplace. So, you know, I'll list some example questions that you could see on the exam. Again, you know, we're going to provide to you, you know, practice exams, we'll provide uh, a lab environment in which you can, you know, have hands-on knowledge and then, you know, an instructor that's going to teach you uh, the, the concepts for a week, boot camp. So some example questions you might see, you know, given the following, you know, you have a line here, which is a Linux directory, which of the following best describes the above attack that's occurring, right? Well, based on this, I can see that, you know, this is a directory uh, type uh, uh, URL that's being listed here and ETC password is directory Linux It's going to have uh, user information, right? ETC slash shadow is going to have password information. ETC slash password is going to have user base information. This is a directory traversal attack, trying to gain information from that organization by type, typing in a URL and hoping that there's no authentication that's going to prevent me from getting to that directory. Uh, which of the following tools would be what a penetration tester leverage conduct? OSINT. Open source intelligence. We kind of talked briefly about open source intelligence. See what you guys are saying in chat. <laughs> I see some answers. A and E. A and E is correct. And C is correct, Cindy. Very good. Uh, A and E, Shodan and Multigo. These are two things you can actually go online right now. Uh, and I think it's Shodan.com and Multigo.com. I may be wrong, but you can just Google it. And their websites uh, that basically uh, are types of open source intelligence, things that people have, <laughs> Multega rule pools, things that people have that are not secure, uh, like I would say public webcams. A lot of those are unsecure. You can you can log into people's webcams that have no security on them. Uh, and again, these are ethical websites that used to be used ethically, but they are available and these are open source intelligence. So if you type in your name and you maybe type in your computer name, you find it on there, chances are you have something uh, in your network that's not secure and it's available for anybody to see. So you need to, uh, you know, make sure that you're not using default uh, passwords and making sure that you're encrypting your data in case it is out there where people can't get a hold of it. Uh, so learn in the classroom or learn via instructor led. You can come into our office. Uh, we can come to you depending on how big the course is, or you can stay where you're at, you know, with uh, corporate going on. We have a lot of live remote classes going on as well. Uh, whatever uh, meets your needs, we're sure we can accommodate. Uh, we still can offer you guys, you know, the practice exams remote. Teaching remote, you're going to learn just as well. Remote, uh, then, then you would coming in class. I've had people say that, hey, you know, I've taught some remote classes. It's the best remote class that, that I've ever sat in. So uh, either way, uh, we're going to be accommodating. We can even set up um, uh, virtual machines uh, that will have a lab environment installed on it 
uh, that will allow you to remote in uh, and work on that, you know, lab hands-on experience with, you know, using some of these tools that we talked about in, in the lecture. Uh, so, again, if you have any questions, here's our number. There's an the email address. That's a website. Uh, please, uh, if you don't mind, you know, visit, visit our website. We have to actually have a, uh, a LinkedIn website that I think we'll, we'll get up there in chat. Click on our LinkedIn. Uh, follow us. Right? We like followers. We, we offer some great discounts. Sometimes it will pop up on our LinkedIn webpage. We also offer, uh, you know, several um, information, uh, you know, sessions like the ones you guys are in right now. Uh, and, and little news feeds, you know, information, new, informational news feeds that you guys uh, could benefit from. Uh, so, you know, if you don't mind, uh, follow us on LinkedIn, you might come across some uh, great deals as well. Uh, so if you have any questions along with uh, the class, the pricing, when it's offered, uh, you know, contact us at this number or you can shoot us an email and one of our uh, trainers will get back to you. With that being said, long-winded conversation there. Uh, if you have any questions, now I'm going to open up the floor. Are there any questions? Well, I'll take a couple questions. Uh, you're welcome, Alicia. Oh, this is Daniel Burst. I have a question. Yes, sir. Uh, this information you just went over, will you send this out to us? Because I thought it was really good when you went over some of the uh, details. Yeah, it's, uh, it's recording. Uh, as soon as it uploads to the cloud, when I uh, end the uh, conversation, uh, I'll have somebody shoot that link to you. Uh, and I, I appreciate uh, the feedback. Excellent. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Um, hey, um, my question, my question is, um, you know, you were talking about um, in the test itself, uh, when, you know, there's going to be some um, questions as far as, uh, you know, uh, command line interface. So would that be in, in like a, ba a bash? Um, shell or it would be yeah. in a different kind of shell. Yeah, I've, I've seen some uh, scripts where bash is mentioned uh, mm -hmm. and shell. Uh, so yeah, we will be discussing all that in, in class. Very cool. Thank you. You're welcome. I have a question. Yes, sir. Um, one question, um, I, I joined a bit early. I don't know if you reviewed it here already, but how long is the um, boot camp? Uh, boot camp is five days, Monday through Friday, uh, and time varies. I think it's eight to five. Uh, but, you know, again, we can be accommodating. It's an eight hour course. Okay. And um, another question. Sure. As far as the, the list of the exploits and um, that was on the list earlier, as far as the um, objectives. Is that a full exhaustive list or will there be not, other near, well? not nearly a full exhaustive list. Uh, I can't teach a course again in, in 20 minutes. I wish I could. Uh, but uh, I tried to pick out the, uh, the I would guess, a, an overview at a high level uh, mm -hmm. with some of the main points would be in some of the domains. And again, we're going to delve a little bit deeper into some of the uh, things that are used uh, to, you know, tools, information, gathering, uh, and scripting that is used within uh, pen testing. Hey, Lindsay. It, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um, I, I have a question that some of the other folks were asking, too. Um, so the 389 is for the test. As far as the boot camp goes, um, how much is, is that involved also with that, or how much more is the boot camp? So again, you'll have to call in uh, sure. to our trainer or send us an email. Uh, sure. We can get back to you uh, sure. with that information. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. And the, um, another question here, sir. Yeah. Um, as far as the 
tools and frameworks that we're going to be utilizing in class hands-on. Is this, is this all just um, from CompTIA or there will be um, some open source things that we will have to bring to class? Yeah, we're, we're a CompTIA partner. So these are officially uh, things that you would get from CompTIA. CompTIA book, CompTIA labs, PowerPoints from CompTIA, everything. Any other questions? All right. Like I said, if you guys got any questions, follow us on LinkedIn. Uh, appreciate everybody's time. Uh, everyone have a good evening. All right. Thank you. Goodbye. Nothing.